Hi everyone, Steve Kim here. So excited, Steve Kim Show episode number 17. Now before I start, I just a special shout out to my great friend Rachel Dempsey who gave me a fantastic idea for Steve Kim Show episode number 17. Rachel, thank you so much. You and Adam have a beautiful family and I can't wait to see you guys soon enough. So let's get right into it. Episode number 17. Is your basement apartment legal or retrofit? Look, I know you've moved into a house or you're buying a house and you want that income potential. Look, everyone wants that, right? You're watching it on HGTV, the income property shows, and you're like, wow, the, the, it, everything looks amazing and you can start taking checks to the bank, right? So before you do that, there's a few things that I wanna make sure that you are well informed and make the best decision moving, moving forward. So number one, to make your basement apartment legal, you must satisfy three things. Number one, you must abide by current fire and electrical safety codes, right? So having a fire inspector come through and someone from the ESA can come through as well, just to say that, yep, everything is good. Number two, municipality has registered the unit. What that means is you've obtained all appropriate building permits and gone through the appropriate application process. Just like Mike Holmes always says, make sure you've got a permit for it. And then number three, follows local bylaws. Check your local municipality for these bylaws. Look, they're gonna have a little bit of a slight variance, Toronto versus Aurora in Richmond Hill, out in Peel, so on and so forth. So please make sure you check your local bylaws. Uh, number two, what is retrofit status? Look, I go in tons of showings and in brokerage remarks or, you know, kind of in listing information, they talk about, you know, the seller and the seller's agent do not warrant the retrofit status of the basement. And a lot of my buyers say, well, Steve, what's retrofit mean? So I want to break that down. So pretty much re retrofit uh, talks about that basement apartments that have not obtained all appropriate permits. Look, you can get the retrofit status by just obtaining the fire permit. Um, for that basement dwelling. And when you pull, it up, pull out that fire permit or you have that fire permit, don't forget that that applies retroactively to all existing and future basement apartments. So that's something you gotta really, really absolutely pay attention to. And then the last one is, as an agent, we gotta inform our, our buyers if there's a retrofit status on the basement, one of the first things I always do is I ask the listing agent and say, okay, so I understand it's a retrofit status of the basement. My clients are looking for a basement apartment. How can we go about making it legal? So what are you missing to turn this into a legal apartment, right? And it's not an attack on the seller, sellers, the seller or the seller's agent. It's really just me making sure that if my buyers choose to buy this property, they're well protected and they know what they need to fulfill to make that apartment legal, okay? Uh, number three, other terms used to describe basement apartments. Look, you know, um, a lot of the times people are like, I don't know what this means. What does this mean? Does this mean it's legal? So I just wanted to highlight some terms, right, when we talk about a basement apartment. And these are basement apartments that are not necessarily legal. So dwelling unit, in-law suite, auxiliary apartment, granny seat, suite, two-unit house, and separate slash second suite. Basic requirements for legal basement apartment. Now, this changes, right? Building codes change quite frequently. So as much as I'm giving you the information, this could change in a month, this could change in a week. But as of today, these are some of the requirements needed. Not all of them, but just some of the important ones. The ceiling height in a basement must be at least six feet, five inches. Must have a bathroom exhaust fan and a window in the bathroom. There must be one dedicated or allocated parking spot for the renters. The doors must be 32 by 78 inches, right, in measurement. There must be an egress window in the basement that is at least 600 square inches, right? So for essentially a full, or not a full human, but a grown human to kind of uh, successfully get through in the, in the case of a fire or an emergency. Um, and then obviously working smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, obviously on every level uh, in a house. First steps to make uh, your basement apartment legal, number one, check local zoning bylaws. So Bill 140 with your local municipality's building division, and they will absolutely help you with that. Uh, number two, apply for a building permit, and the cost could be anywhere from about 400 bucks up to just under $1,700. And one of the things you have to pay attention to is if the ap application is done appropriately, it could take anywhere from a few days to 30 days to get that permit, and then you're off to the races, right? Um, and then six, stay protected. And Rachel, this is absolutely for you and your beautiful family and for everyone else looking to kind of create that income potential in the basement. These are some things you must absolutely know if you're going to be a landlord and I want to protect you, landlord and tenants alike. Number one, if you're looking to create income property in the basement, do it the right way. 
your current tenant, neighbor, or a complete stranger off the street can actually make a request to the city to inquire about the legality of your basement apartment. So look, if you have a bunch of students in, in the basement and they're renting rooms, so on and so forth, and your neighbor's kind of getting a little bit annoyed at that, and it's not a legal basement apartment, they can actually make a request to the city to have someone come and inspect it. And look, the fines can be huge. They can be super hefty. Uh, one of the fines is if you're an individual, look, you know, it's a, a couple that just has a basement apartment, however, it's not legal, and someone's made the request, you could be fined up to $25,000. And look, if you're a corporation and you hold a lot of properties, you could be fined up to $50,000 and have some jail time on top of that. So the cost, look, I know if you're going to do it the right way, you're going to do the permits, you're going to abide by all of the codes, it's going to be more expensive. Absolutely, there's no, um, there's no if, ands, or buts about that. It will be more expensive, but if you just take a look at some of the possible fines, I think moving forward, I think just to keep you protected would be the best thing. So if you're asking me, Steve, should I turn it into a legal apartment that I do want to rent out? I would say yes, all day, every single day. Um, and as well within your legal rights as a tenant, so this is for tenants to have your landlord bring your apartment up to current fire code requirements. So please make sure, whether you're a tenant, your landlord, please make sure you stay well informed and you know your rights and you're doing it the right way. Anyways, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. As always, please feel free to send me a uh, text, give me a call, shoot me an email with any questions you have whatsoever. And thank you so much, Rachel, uh, for just a wonderful topic idea. I hope you have a great day and week. Don't forget, be great, be kind, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.